Hello folks, this is Sula here again. We're going to be doing part two of my video series for Civilization IV featuring Will Willem of the Dutch. And I would like to start by just saying thanks to everybody who watched the first video. I wasn't entirely sure what the feedback would be on that first video because Civilization is a much slower paced game. It's a lot different than the games that I've been featuring so far on my channel. But the response was overwhelmingly positive. I had so many nice things said by so many different people. I really appreciated that, and I'm glad to see that there seems to be genuine enthusiasm for these videos. So I'm going to continue this with part two and continue on with the game that I started last time. I do think this is a game that I feel very passionately about. I have a whole lot of interest in strategy games. I also have, of course, a huge interest in history, as those of you who know a little bit more about me have picked up on. So a game like this is something that, like I said, I have a lot of passion for, and hopefully it's something that come th comes through in the videos, because this is a game that I really and truly do enjoy. So anyway, let's pick up where we left off. I'm gonna load the save right here, and we should be able to get started. Should load really fast, because we're still early in the game. These load times get a lot longer the longer the game goes on, and if you play on a huge map size, it takes a lot longer too. So we're going to pick up with where we left off. Now, I made a, a f I actually made a couple mistakes in that first video part. I, I should probably have a, two mines down right now. I should probably have a mine already down on this tile as well, because I wasted about four worker turns, and that is significant. That's, that's a pretty big mistake in that first part. So I, I mean, I, I would say I played the first part decently, but not great. This is also not a particularly good starting location. A couple people pointed that out in the comments. This is the dreaded Plains Cow start. This is a very low food start. So this is actually not a particularly great starting position. If I had like a Riverside, uh, if I had a Riverside corn on like this tile, this start would be, you know, probably two to three times better than it actually is right now. But we do have a couple things working in our favor. Number one, we are the Dutch. We are Willem of the Dutch, Willem van Orange of the Dutch. And he, that is one of the strongest pairings at least under at least with restricted leaders in the game so i have a, an extremely strong civilization and uh, i am i do have a riverside start which is great for financial you want riverside starts and we'll see why that's important once i get to pottery and the other thing that works is working in my favor is this is only emperor so even though i really haven't done that much so far i've already you know more or less in the middle of the pack here with the other teams on score and i should be able to race out ahead of them pretty quickly Anyway, so we're going to get started from here. I did think about what I want to do with um, with my city and with my characters. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have, uh, let's see, I was, I'm going to finish this worker and then I'm going to try to grow to size four and then build a, and then build a settler with a chop and a double whip. And then I'll build a, a granary while regrowing. So that's what I think I'm going to do here. And let's see, for this worker, let's see, I don't need to improve another tile right now. Like, I don't need to improve another tile until this city grows to size 4. So I think I'm going to get started on building the road between these two cities, because a road connection will increase the amount of commerce. Oh, and I do have a fight here. Oh no, it's Volibear, come on! Yes, take that, Volibear. <laughs> and there's another... Uh, animal over there. So other than that, I'm pretty much just exploring. Oh, this guy only needs to win one more battle to get to Woodsman too. Did he take any damage at all in that combat? Nope, no damage at all. Look at that. That's really sweet. So I did have 20, 28% odds to lose that, but I got a hugely lucky uh, streak of combat and he won all five rounds, see? So I took no damage. That, that's actually very lucky. He should, if he won the battle, he probably should have taken a lot of damage. So anyway, let's heal up there for a turn. I do not want to lose that unit because it only needs one more battle to get to Woodsman 2, which is a really good promotion. Uh, this early, Really good this early in the game. Anyway, let's see. Where do I want to build this road? I think I want to build here, here, and here. So let's do that right now. Build a road there. Um, let's see. I need to clear out this tile. I want to clear out the... Uh, ocean over there. Uh, let's see. I'm going to keep this guy exploring for now. See what, see if, I need to see if there's any seafood up here. If there's seafood up here, it's worth settling. If there isn't seafood up here, it's not worth settling. Yep, see? And that's why I need to, needed to check up there. That makes a huge difference. That fish resource means that it's worth, that it's worth putting a city up there. So my worker's going to finish the road. Now, if I do nothing, it'll finish the road 
naturally, yeah. or alternately, if I want to, I can cancel that order and I can assign a different order. And the one turn we put into the road will stay there. See, if I highlight it, it says one turn instead of two. So you can put partial worker turns into building an improvement and that will get saved in the game, which is useful in a lot of situations. But I actually, I'm gonna just finish that road. So what do roads do in this game? Well, roads do not uh, it, it change the tile yield of the tile at all. Notice this is a two food tile. Two food, it's still exactly the same as another unimproved plant, uh, glare sun tile. Still, see, two food, two food, doesn't change. What it does do is it increases movement, so you can move faster on roads, and it creates a trade connection. So if I connect these two cities, they'll have a trade route between them, and they can share resources. And early in the game, that trade route is worth a decent amount of commerce. I'll get two extra commerce from completing that. And this early in the game, that's that's worth a decent amount. So since there's not really any tile improvements to improve at the capital, I'm going to connect these two cities. And then I'm going to look to go and uh, improve this race resource, which I'll have in my borders pretty quickly. Actually, I should probably... Let's see. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do something a little bit more complicated. Watch. I'm going to move here. I'm going to move one tile. I'm going to put one turn into the road. And then I'm going to cancel it. So why do I do this? Now I've got one tile road, I'm one tile away from a road here. And then uh, basically it allows me to move towards the rice while also putting a worker turn towards something useful this turn. All right, more stuff dies down there. So you'll see, I'm gonna move partial build this road because I wanna get to that rice tile and improve it ASAP. Since this is pretty much the only good tile at this city. This city really stinks, this is not a good city. It has very low potential. I only founded it for two reasons. One, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to block off uh, the, the Portuguese leader, who I've been told I should not pronounce Yoel, that it's that that J sound in Portuguese is closer to a Z or SH sound. So I think it's more like Zoal. I'll try that. People can tell me if I get it wrong. But anyway, like I said, I wanted to plant the city. First of all, to block him off, to seal off the border over here and keep him from expanding towards my capital. And then secondly, I wanted the ivory so I can build war elephants later. And third, I wanted to get the copper. And the copper will eventually get in my borders. It's a third ring border pop. So it'll be there pretty soon. Well, not pretty soon. In like, uh, I guess, roughly 20 to 25 turns, I'll have that. So right now I want to grow, so let's go to the worker. And we're running max food, or a warrior, excuse me. And we're running max food tiles. So we'll, um, yeah, so this is this looks fine here. Now I've got a second worker. So watch what I can do with these two workers. Oh, and there's the border pop there. Watch what I can do with these two. Um, hmm. Well, no, actually, I want to start I want to start mining. I was going to do something more comp complicated with the roads, but I actually need to start mining right now so I can have that hill tile improved when I hit size 4. I'm not seeing a whole lot up here. We're definitely near the North Pole. Okay, so I can finish the road here if I want to, or what I can do is I can save a worker turn. I can move here, and I can put a turn into a road, and then again, I can cancel the road. So now I'm moving towards the rice tile, but I'm also not wasting worker turns. See, I've got a turn into a road here, a turn into a road here, and uh, next turn I'll move and do the same right here. Also, yes, no, notice how it prioritizes high food first. Yeah, I don't want it to automate the citizens. Um, but it prioritizes high food by default, which is what it should. Anyway, so I do want to need to get up there and farm that rice. Because it's the only decent tile that this city has. And then I'll improve the uh, ivory. So again, rule of thumb, you, need to, you want to improve resources first. That really comes before anything else. Improving resources is like the thing to do early in the game. And food resources are most important. Okay, are we on jungle right now? Let's see. Um... I don't know, let's just move here. So this is a barb warrior as opposed to a barb animal. So notice, just like my warrior, two strength, he should attack my warrior and commit suicide because I have like a gazillion defensive bonuses. I have plus 95% defense, so I should win easily. Let's move here. And again, now again, I can move to the rice tile, but then I'll lose out on a movement point. You know, I'll, uh, I'll move out, lose out on this turn's worth of work. So again, I'm gonna put one turn of work into a road, then cancel that. And now I'm one turn away from a road here, one turn away from a road here, two turns away from a road here, because it's a desert tile. And now here I'm just going to mine. Not seeing a whole lot up here in the icy tundra. Alright, so I think I'm going to have this guy, I need to have one of these guys circle back, because I'm going to put a city up here relatively soon. And that's where I'm going to go next. So, um, 
one of these guys can circle back. Oh, no, never mind. I have an, I'll have an extra warrior. I'm about to build one in the capital, so I'll be good. Oh, he moved away. Hath not the potter power over the clay to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? All right, so pottery, very important tech. Can build cottages, which are crucial. I'll get to cottages in a minute. And also allows granaries, which are the probably the most important city improvement in the game. And we want to go on from there to writing. All right, so we need one more turn to growth. So I need to put dump one turn worth of production into something. If I could build gold or wealth, I could actually preserve the overflow here. So um, let's put we'll put a turn worth of production into the granary while we're growing. And then this guy's going to head up north. Um, I still really want this guy to attack me, so I'm going to move here and again try to bait him into attacking me. And meanwhile, my explorers are just out checking things out. So again, notice how even though I've built all these warriors, they're actually quite useful. You know, I have them out just exploring in all directions, trying to find stuff. Oh, now the AI has jumped ahead of me again in score. Oh well, we'll catch up soon enough. So now I'm finally on the rice tile. Now I can farm it five turns to improve it. So we'll farm this and get to work on this. And I'm, I'm, I think, two turns away from this mine completing. Yeah, two turns away from completing the mine. Okay, so we're in decent shape here, all things considered. Let's check our tech tree. So again, as far as things I, that are actually useful to me right now, writing is actually useful. It's actually also quite cheap because I have two, prere two prerequisites. I'm not going to explain what that means. Uh, I don't need hunting. I have no hunting resources right here. I don't need sailing. I'm not doing anything on the water just yet. And I'm not going the religious path. This is the religious path. And uh, I don't really have too much to do with masonry yet. Masonry is more useful for wonder building. I do have stone and I do have marble. Where was the marble? Up there. But I'm really not looking to pursue early wonders. I'm just looking to play sort of a basic game of Civ. Oh wow, that guy still didn't attack me. And there's barbs up here. Okay, so he has also adopted slavery. Okay, so now we're getting a better sense of where things lie. This guy still won't attack me. There's another source of forces. Okay, so maybe it looks like the land comes to... It looks like this is the end of the Pangaea over here. That means we'll probably fight Portugal's leader sometime soon. All right, so now we're size four. This is what we want. This is looking good here. I just need to complete the mine because notice how on this tile I only get three food, whereas I get four here and I get uh, I get a combined four production food on these other tiles. So this is like this is six, three food, three production. This is three. This is four. This is four. By mining this hill tile, I'll also get four. So that's why I want to mine this tile. And we're going to swap to a settler. And then when it gets to um, then I'm going to double whip it when it gets down when it gets. Uh, kind of gets close to the requisite amount. That's because this this the one thing that this place has is a fair amount of food. And then I'll build the granary while uh, regrowing. Yeah, I don't I'm not sure if the double whip actually is ideal or not, but I want to demonstrate whipping in this game. Oh, there, there we go. They finally got them to attack. There we go. So we win the battle. And for winning that, we get another experience point. And now that we're at 5 of 5, we can take a second promotion. So we can take Woodsman 2. And Woodsman 2 is really useful early in the game because more jungle defense, more forest defense, and double movement in jungle and forest. So now if I'm moving through jungle and forest, I can move not one tile per turn, but two. So watch. I can move there, and then I can move up here. So that's why you want to go Woodsman 2 early in the game. It really helps your scouting quite a bit. And of course, it also makes your units less likely to die because they're... Um, you know, because they've got the defensive bonus. Okay, so this, he's got copper right here. And I'm pretty sure this is, I'm pretty sure this is his capital right here too. And he's got copper in it, so that's not the best. Uh, yeah, this is what I want to do. And then I'm going to build the granary next. And then I need to get down and improve that, uh, improve that ivory tile. I also need to get another, um, I also need to get another... Uh, worker out here too. Maybe I'll build one in Utrecht. It's not ideal, but I need more workers. Let's see. How long would it take? 12 turns. Uh, hmm. It's that or the granary. Uh, yeah, it's far from ideal, but I just need workers early in the game. And my land's kind of weak here. What do I want to do with this guy? That, I'm not sure. Probably just keep him around. Maybe poke around down there a little bit. Or just keep him in the area in case Yoel tries something. 
or Zoal. <laughs> I have to try that to get that right. Anyway, let's just see how far this goes back here. So, I mean, I could move here, but then I don't get to move twice, so I want to move through the forest again. And this might, I wonder how far back this goes. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so we finished the mine, so let's swap that there, and that means we get more total production. See, we get 14 if I'm here, we get 13 if I'm here. So, makes more sense to do it that way. And now, what do I want to do with this guy? Well, I'm not going to be going over size 4 for the moment. Hmm... I probably want to get up here and build a cottage on that floodplain tile, because that's the most useful tile improvement I can build. And yes, I can do that with minimal waste. can move here. Now I'm on the road, so I get an extra movement point. So now I can move up to here, and I can start cottaging there next turn. Now I'll explain what cottages do in a minute. Oh, we found Pakal's Warders. Okay. So I'm going to have to get a move on on this area next, I think. And we can always settle that area, the jungle, later. Because the jungle won't be useful until we can chop it down. Anyway, unfortunately I'm working a lot of unimproved tiles, but again, it's just this start is kind of weakish, unfortunately. Let me check my espionage. Can we see his demographics? I just want to be able to see the demographics with each player. Let's just see if anyone's building up a lot of military. I, I doubt that they are this early in the game. Uh, Yoal, or Zoal has the most probably because he has that copper. Is it is it connected? No, he is not hooked up to copper yet. How can I tell this? Because it says requires mine. If it was connected, it would not say requires mine. So he hasn't hooked up his copper yet. That's a good sign. We'll have our own copper. We'll have our own horses before too. Oh, somebody built Stonehenge. Who was it? It was Louis. So how do I know this? Because his score shot up the most. We can also check on F9, the demographics. Or no, it's Germany. Wow. I thought for sure it would be. Oh, Paris is... Paris is a really large, high size. Okay, so Germany has built Stonehenge. Okay, that's weird. Hmm, I guess uh, I guess his score's low because um, because he was building Stonehenge. Okay, there is another barb warrior. Let's fortify here and see if he'll attack. We'd like to get rid of that guy. All right, there's a barb again. I'd like to try to bait him into attacking me just to get rid of him. Okay, so we got the farm. We'll finish here. There we go. Now instead of three food, it produces four. That drops the worker time. And now I want to get down there and improve the uh, improve the ivory next. But I'm going to... Um... Yeah, I don't need to hook up the rice to my road network just yet. Anyway, over here, we're going to move to this tile, and we're going to build a cottage on it. This will take a while, five turns. Now, farms increase the food on a tile. And mines increase the production, so cottages increase the commerce on a tile. And the really neat thing about co cottages is that they improve over time if you work the tile. So I'll talk more about that later, but if I build a cottage here, it'll go from 3 food, 1 commerce, to 3 food, 2 commerce. And it'll actually get boosted further than that because I'm financial. Anyway, let's fortify here. Let's see, 2 population. So, where am I? Let's see, if I put another turn's worth of production into this. Let's see, 54 plus 14. 14 is 68. Okay, I can go one more turn before double whipping. As if I get one more turn. Um, yeah, one more turn, I still can't complete the... So I need one more turn, basically, there. Alright, now up here, I'm going to move back to this tile, and I'm going to build a road on it. And again, because we already put a turn's worth of worker labor into it, boom, we get complete the road. And now with the road, I can move directly to the ivory tile next turn. So again, it's all about trying to save worker turns. You don't want to ever waste a worker turn unless you have to. Unfortunately, I did waste some worker turns in the early game. No seafood up there. That means that area is pretty much worthless. Without seafood, it's not, not really valuable. So we need to whip this next turn. All right. Oh, wow. Okay, so his borders just expanded here. He must have built a monument in there. And that that unit did not attack, so... Um, I don't have writing. Let's see if he has writing. If so, I can... No, I was going to say, if so, I can sign open borders and scout him out. There's that barb. We can't. You can't sign open borders until you get writing. I'm also going to have to turn down science soon, because I've almost run out of my initial bankroll. So that'll decrease science slightly. Oh, barb archer, that's not good. There's a lot of barbs running around. I need to get more advanced military units. I can't fight them off with warriors forever. Somebody founded another religion. 
Hard to say who. It's actually likely Gandhi or Pakal. So they both start with mysticism. Oh, I don't have hunting. Okay, well, <laughs> that was silly of me. <laughs> no hunting, so I can't build a camp. I forgot to research that. We'll get it after writing. Let's just have this guy rest for this turn. I don't want to fight that. Not on open ground. Oh, this guy rest a turn too to see if he gets attacked. Okay, well, that was silly of me. I forgot that I uh, was going to improve the ivory, so I should have gone I should have done hunting before writing. Anyway, this is almost complete, so let's let it finish and then I'll go for hunting. Hunting's a very cheap tech. One of the cheapest in the game. Actually, it is it's tied for fishing with the cheapest in the game. Only 62 beakers, whereas writing's 187. Although writing's cheaper than it seems because of prerequisite stuff. Anyway, um, I'm going to finish connecting this road, therefore. But I wasted more worker turns. Alright. So, got the barb to attack me. That's good. That one moved out of the way. I am in last place on text discovered that's to be expected on higher difficulty when the game starts out. Now, let's see. Oh, it's Louis who founded the religion. Okay, yes. So right now we want to finish this road connection. Fortify here. Hopefully the archer attacks me. Oh, there's another archer. That's a battle I might very well lose. War archer against warrior. I mean, I've got the 50% defensive bonus, but not guaranteed by any means. Oh, I forgot to double whip the settler. Oh, well. That was that was not so good. I forgot to, I forgot to whip. So we'll let it complete naturally at this point, and then um, then I'll figure something out after that. It's not worth it to single whip that settler to completion. I'll probably whip a worker. Probably just have to whip a worker. I think I win this. Nope. So I lost that battle. Again, need to get more advanced units than just warriors at some point. Oh, come on. Don't tell me I'm going to lose that too. Oh, my God. That's very unlucky. I should have won that second battle. Yeah, that second battle, the archer only had 26% odds to win. The first one had a 56%, but so, yeah, I had three, I had, you know, about three quarters odds to win that second one. All right, so we need to get more advanced units, which means we need to hook up resources. Otherwise, I'm just a sitting duck. Anyway, so now we finally got to turn down science. We'll finish writing. Um, I need to get up here, and I need to get these horses connected. All right, but we do have our cottage. At least we do have our first cottage completed. And uh, I think it'll complete the settler anyway. So so how do cottages work? Well, notice how it says 10 turns to Hamlet. And cottages grow over time if you work the tile. It starts at producing three commerce, and it will eventually, if uh, when it grows to the next size, it'll produce four, then five, and then six at the highest level. Now it's a little bit funny, what cottages do is add one commerce to a tile. So let's say I build a, co a cottage on this tile. It'll go from being two food to being two food, one commerce. Now, because it's everything that's next to a river gets an extra point of commerce. So see, this tile is just two food. This tile is two food, one commerce. That's because it's next to a river. Now when I build a cottage next to a river, it goes to two food, two commerce. So you'd, ex you'd think that this tile would have three, you'd think this tile would have two commerce and not three because adding a, co a cottage only adds one commerce to it. However, this is where my sieve trait comes in. Financial, long being considered to be the best trait in the game for a long running game. Notice financial plus one commerce on any plot that produces two commerce. So instead of producing two, it produces three. And this is why financial sieves are so strong. Early in the game, if you start on a river, you build cottages on a river, and they start at three commerce, like this tile. You know, it starts at three commerce. That's a really big deal, starting at three commerce. As opposed to, say, starting, uh, if you built, if you were non-financial, and you built a cottage right here, it would start at one commerce, and then after 10 turns, it would go to two, and then after another 20 turns, it would go to three. So financial plus river gives you just a huge acceleration on your growth curve over non-financial. So, makes a really big difference. Oh, dang it, come on. I want to get that guy to attack. Anyway, he wants uh, open borders. That's fine. Fine with me. Open borders improves relations over time. 
And it also glory consists uh, in doing gives you trade routes if you have a connection. In writing what deserves to be read. So now we need hunting. I gotta tick that down now. And anyway, I've got the settler out. I'm gonna reconfigure for growth and commerce here. So I'm gonna work high food tiles. And uh, I'm gonna, what should I do? Uh, let's see, I'm gonna grow this until it's just about to hit size um, five. And then when it does that, I'm going to double whip a worker and then overflow into the granary. Yes, that's the way to play this from what I have right now. Again, let's see if we can get this guy to suicide. All right, now the tile I want is this tile here because that gets the, the deer, the horses, and the um, sheep all in the city at once. So, uh, this is unfortunate. I can't speed this up. Anyway, let's go here. Let's see, what do I want to do with this worker? Um, hmm. I probably don't need to build another cottage just yet, because I don't think I'm going to be working these tiles for a bit. So, what I can do is um, improve this city up here. So, you probably should get a road connection up there, I think. Actually, I don't need a road connection because it's on a river. So, no, I. I Actually, I should just start moving up towards this city to improve tiles. Okay, I'll be safe here. Can't get killed. Oh, we met the last leader. Might as well sign open borders. So he's got one city. Okay, so now we've met everybody. Let's try to get open borders with Zoal as well. So he also has one city. Yeah, AI is usually willing to sign open borders. So now we can move into his territory and explore what he's got. We can also, you know, we can also see how many cities everybody's got by just clicking on here. See, so he's got he's got one city. We can also see who he's met. He's met he's met everybody. Let's just do a quick check on everybody. Let's see if we find anything. See, he's only got one city. He hasn't met Hannibal yet. And sign open borders with everybody. There's no reason to be get on bad terms with anyone. No all sign open borders. Yeah, so they all have one city. That's that's a good sign. I'm gonna get to my I'm gonna get to my third city before they get to um their third city. Now right here, let's finish the trade route connection, build the road here, and now the two cities are connected, and the trade route will appear next turn. Okay. And then uh, I need to Find, figure out something. To, okay, I can um, I can road the rice while I'm waiting for hunting to come in, or something like that. <laughs> I really hate having to work that unimproved tile, but there's just not much I can do. And let's adjust espionage. We don't need a gazillion points going into Pakal. We just want to get graphs on everyone. So uh, let's check out Louis because he's leading in score right now. Can see graphs, can see graphs. I might have to increase points with Yoal or Zoal soon, because he spent some points against me. We'll see that. I'm not a big fan of espionage. I think it's kind of a waste of time in this game. Yes, finally managed to bait this guy into attacking me. And he killed me at ridiculous odds. There's the trade route. Um, that is a huge setback, actually. And that was incredibly unlucky. Yeah, he had he had less than 10% odds to win that battle, but he did. Um, that is really unlucky because now I am going to have real trouble getting my city up here. Man, that really stinks. Uh, <laughs> so all my warriors have pretty much died. Most of them at poor odds. Anyway, here's his capital. Ah. <sighs> Oh man, why did that have to happen? I mean, seriously? He killed a Woodsman 1 Warrior in a forest at 9% odds? I mean, seriously? Hmm. Well. It's gonna make this city un unhappy if I move him out, won't it? Nothing to do but just wait. Alright, I'm at the happy cap though. I'm gonna have to build another warrior. Or, uh. Oh no, never mind. The warrior that was down there got killed. 
Let's pop out another warrior. No choice, just gotta pop one out right now. Which is a shame because a granary would be infinitely more useful to build right now. But nothing to be done. And I can't afford to lose these units. I just, just have to sit here and wait a turn or two until that warrior can get up there to protect them. <laughs> That's really a waste. Gotta move that guy out of the way, otherwise he can get killed. That is actually, so that's really a huge setback. Anyway, the thing I wanted to talk about this turn is now I have a trade route, so I get one commerce in this city, and one commerce in this city, and it's early enough in the game that that actually does matter quite a bit. So, um, let's get down here, and, um, hmm, do I want to connect? Just get down here and be in position to hook up the ivory when it appears. Ugh. Setbacks, setbacks, setbacks. Anyway. Oh, so he moves out of the way anyway. Okay. So this is pretty risky. But I will gamble that that warrior is not... Let's just gamble that there's nothing up here and we can safely found this city. Barbs can capture cities in this game, by the way. I'm going to start by chopping this forest. Oh, well, that unit's dead. <laughs> Barb's causing a lot of trouble. Anyway, so, oh, this is actually, so this is Zoal's second city. He's got a uh, granary and a monument in there. He got the, he can build the granary quickly because he's expansive and he gets cheap granaries. And his capital's right up there. So next turn we'll finish hunting, we'll put one turn into a road, and then cancel that. And then we'll be okay. Just doing a song and a dance up here, basically, hoping that my units will not die to something barbarian. This unit is definitely dead. Barring some ridiculous dice roll, he's dead. That's okay, I managed to get a lot of territory explored. If you chase two rabbits, you will lose them both. Okay, what do we need to get next? Um... Hmm. There's not really anything that's super high priority at this point. Maybe I should just pick up archery because it's cheap and it would be nice to build some archers instead of warriors. I guess I'll do that. It's either that or math, and math is pretty expensive, so get something cheap. All right, let's see. It. So here's the, the here's the uh, Portuguese capital. Let's see what's in there. Wow, he's got a, his wow, his capital is so much better than mine. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, his capital is so much better than mine. He has double corn, copper, a gazillion forest to chop. Wow. If my capital on a scale of 1 to 10 is like a 2 or a 3, his is about an 8. Wow, is his capital better than mine. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> anyway, th this will be fun. At least the AI doesn't know how to play correctly. Uh, he's got a barracks and a granary in there as long as the, along with the palace. That's that's kind of funny, just how much better it is. Anyway, now we can hook up the uh, the ivory. Ivory is not a great tile. It'll be one three. It'll be one three one after I connect it, and like that's not an especially great tile. All right. Let's found this city. Hopefully that uh, archer won't show up here. First thing I want is a granary, naturally. This also is connected to my capital by a trade route. But it also increases maintenance costs. And I'm going to start chopping. Forest chopping up there. So as long as I don't uh, have my cities killed, I should be in good shape. Alright, so we're going to put turn into a worker here. And then we're going to double whip it. Double whip it next turn. So I can definitely use the extra worker and then grow back and overflow into that granary. Alright, so my science is, notice how my science, even though my science percentage has gone down from 100% to 60%, I'm still making about the same amount of beakers as I was earlier in the game. Um, I'm up to, uh, I'm at 12 instead of, uh, like before I was at 100% at 12, now I'm 60% at 12. Alright, it looks like I'm going to be okay up there. Finally got a worker, let's go into a granary next. I'm definitely going to chop this granary, definitely going to chop this granary and then go on to a library. So I've got another worker here. 
before I forget, so here's a whip. So what whipping allows you to do is convert food into production. So this I will convert to population into 60, uh, to population into 60 production. Each whip is worth 30, 30 production on normal speed. So let's do that. Here we go. Now I'm size two, but I will grow very quickly back to size three. And I have got a ton of production overflow. And the best thing to work is usually, usually you want to, um, usually you want to whip workers and settlers because it allows you to get around the key restriction, which is that you can't grow while you're building workers and settlers. So I'll have a nice little amount of overflow here, and I can overflow that into the granary. And let's just keep. Yeah, I, I don't need to worry about. It. Let's just keep that on the cottage for right now. So now I will have a lot of workers. One, two, three. I'll have four workers, and that's good. I'm going to move here and work on the camp, try to get that connected, and then I can do some more chopping. Okay, looks like we're going to be okay. Just had some worrisome moments there, but in the end, going to be all right. Even though this is kind of a weakish start. So now the worker will come out. I can chop some of this stuff into, into useful things, and I probably want to expand again soon too. I really need to get these horses connected so that I can build a unit that's not a warrior, <laughs> a decent defensive unit. Anyway, here we go. Get this guy in the city. Fortunately, um, fortunately, uh, when you pop borders, you get a defensive bonus. Notice how this has plus 20%. That's the defensive bonus, because I've popped culture once. The capital, I have plus 40%, because I've popped borders twice. All right, so now this is why we whip. Notice how I got that worker in uh, basically two turns of production with the whip over, with the whip and the overflow. And now look at all this overflow, 19 overflow. And look, that all goes into the granary. So this speeds up my growth curve considerably. Now next turn, I'll be size three and I'll grow very quickly back to size four. And the one cost is 10 turns of whip unhappiness. See the unhappiness? Two from population, one from whipping. You can see it down here for nine more turns, I'll have that. But whipping is fundamental to playing this game need to understand how the whip works to play Civ, uh, Civ 4 effectively. Anyway, now we've got the camp connected. Let's see, do I want to work this tile? Uh, that I'm not entirely sure. Do I want the extra growth? Um, let's see, actually I think I do want this tile and then I want to chop one of these forests. I want to chop this one. So let's, let's do that. Um, yeah, let's finish this. So now a word about resources. So I finally connected my first resource. Yes, 58 turns into the game I've connected my first resource. Notice how I have a little elephant symbol here. This provides happiness. So again, looking at the happiness screen, you get four default happiness. And then now I have an extra happy face because I get one from the luxury. So this means that I can grow up to size five without becoming unhappy. And in the capital, I can grow up to size three. Where does the extra happy face come from? You get one from the palace when you start out. So now what I want to do is I want to I want to uh, not whip my capital, I want to start growing the capital, and I want to start working a lot of riverside cottages. That's really my goal next. Well, I may, what I probably want to do is I want to grow it up to the happy cap and then double whip a settler. That's probably what I'll do here. Uh, and let's see, so the next thing I need to do is, let's see, I probably need to uh, cottage some more tiles. That and build a road up to this city, so. Let's move here and put one turn into a road. And then I can move here and build a cottage or I can start moving up towards the next city. Anyway, right here I finished a chop into The Hague. I finished a chop on um, on the forest tile. So notice I get 20 production from the chop. And that will greatly advance the rate at which this granary is being built. Um, now normally the, the resource I want to connect first is the sheep because it adds food and food is what's you know most important. But I, I might want to get this horses tile connected just so I can build chariots and not be a sitting duck in terms of uh, in terms of military defense. We'll see. Anyway, let's play to turn 60 and then I'm probably going to have to stop this video before it gets any longer. Yep, there it is. First happiness resource. Okay. This guy, um, I want to accelerate the growth curve of this city. So I think I'm going to move this worker up here. The capital is okay for the moment. So let's try to do that. Yeah, capital looks good. We've got plus six food, and we'll go to plus seven when we pick up the oasis tile uh, at size four. 
and we've got that granary built. Uh, th this granary is actually not time to complete at a good time. You want the granary to complete when the food box is half full, not empty, but I don't really see any way to get around doing that right now. So we've got one turn of road on this. Let's, uh, let's see. Hmm. What can we do? I can move to here, and then I can move to the sheep tile next turn. That seems like the most useful thing to do. Here, let's see, I can move here. The sheep is going to be in the borders. Oh, not next turn. I thought it would be next turn. Okay. Well, I'll just build the road. I'll just start the road then. I thought it was going to be in my borders next turn, but I should have I should have checked. All right, so we've got uh, Zoas territory explored pretty well. Over here, uh, yeah, I want to chop. I want to put a chop into this granary. It's the most important thing to do because I don't need that rice resource just yet. So, hmm, can I double chop? Why don't I? Yeah, let's double chop the granary. That seems like the. That's that seems like a better way to go. So I will chop both of these forests. I will get 40 production into the granary, and that should be enough to complete it. Now, granaries are super important because they store food. Let me see if it says that in the description. Hold on. Stores 50% after growth. So I guess I won't be able to show that until the next video, but that's why granaries are so key. You pretty much want to build a granary first in every city. Unless there's a very compelling argument otherwise. Okay. So let's see. Uh, this will expand next turn. I'll finish that road, which doesn't really do anything. I probably should have chopped another forest instead of building that road. Oh well. And it looks like there's another Portuguese city there. We're going to set these both to chop. 20 production, 20 production. So chopping is key because it accelerates your growth curve so much. All right, let's just hit ne next turn. Still can't go to the next size yet. Um, <laughs> I guess I've got... Let's just get this border expansion. I always want to keep playing this game. Uh, yes, I guess I didn't sign them with him. Okay, so the barbs are staying out of my territory for the most part right now. There's the border expansion. Now we're going to hook up the sheep tile and get a five food tile. And then we're going to skedaddle over to the horses and hook them up. And then we'll actually be able to build some military units from there. And we'll finish archery next turn. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape right now. I'm pretty happy with where we are. Uh, I'd actually like to keep playing, but I think this video is about 50 minutes already. And I probably need to uh, put, come to, you know, finish off the video now or it's going to be too long for YouTube. So anyway, some interesting stuff going on. We've had some fun, fun encounters with barbs. I'm in pretty good shape. Um, let's see how I'm doing on the demographics just as a way to finish it off. Score, score is not that useful as a bar graph. GMP, I'm just average. That's fine. Pakal. That's, that's fine for this stage in the game. I'll be able to accelerate past them. Low on production, that's fine. Yo, Zoa is very high on production. Food, I'm fine with being there this early in the game, especially considering my bad start. Zoa should be way ahead of me in food, and he's not. So that's a good sign. Way down in power. Wow, he is quite high in power. That's the only thing that's a little bit scary, because he's that close to me. And if he attacked me right now, I would be in danger. I definitely need to get... I really need to... um. I really need to get copper and uh, copper and or at least horses hooked up ASAP. Otherwise, he can just you know kill me. So I need these borders to expand. I'll build a library next to the granary, and that'll increase the rate at which culture borders expand. So I need to get more culture there so I can hook up the copper, and then I need to get these horses connected, and then I'll be able to fight if I have to. And I'll probably put another city over here pretty soon too, so I can start using these gold resources, even though I have no food. But I'll just build a bunch of farms. Yeah, this tile looks like a good... Um, maybe not that tile. Well, I'll figure it out. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, we'll continue this next time. Till then, see you later.